Well, surprise, surprise, we got ourselves a little DLC for Total War Troy. Now, this was kind of divulged from taking a look at some of the files way back when Mythos came out, but it's cool to see this actually coming on here with Memnon and Rhesus. Rhesus, 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 Rhesus pieces. And it's going to be two pretty interesting characters that are going to join the Trojan side of the conflict. Um, and this is good because there's quite a few um, Achaean characters. And so this kind of helps kind of balance things out. And they have a really cool mythology and history wrapped up in them. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to watch this trailer together, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about Memnon and Rhesus of Thrace, so that this way you get a good idea of how they'll really probably play into the overall power struggle of Total War Saga Troy, especially Memnon, which is going to introduce Ethiopia and also the Levant, um, Egypt as a whole, part of Canaan. So there should, there should be a lot of fun mechanics coming with this DLC, and I'm pretty stoked on it. As always, though, guys, if you have not yet pre-ordered or purchased uh, Total War Saga Troy, you can do so, I think, using the Nexus link in my description. It should be active by the time this goes up, and it will be there if you want to help support the channel, so you may go ahead and do so. You'll get a Steam key directly from the developer, and as always, it is a great way to support the channel. And you'll find out at the end of the video, there's a bunch of different uh, versions of this, so we'll go over that too. So hang tight, and we'll, we'll talk about those versions. But let's go ahead and get started here on the new DLC of Rhesus and Memnon for Total War Saga Troy. So what we'll be doing here is the same thing we do anytime there's a trailer. I'm going to press play. I've turned the volume down because I don't want to get YouTube just trying to touch my butt. But Troy. opening up cool here with Memnon. And Memnon is a really cool character from mythology. And I already like the aesthetic we get to see. And with Rhesus too, we get a pretty interesting character. So we'll see some fun stuff. We see Thrace. Kind of looking at this is awesome. Oh, look at that aesthetic. I love the Egyptian look for all of them. Well, Ethiopian, technically. <laughs> that sweet-ass Kopesh. So I, I, I'm jazzed on it. I'm stoked. We'll talk about the versions in just a little bit. But getting both these characters into the game is very exciting here. So when we when you talk about Memnon here, let's get a good let's get a good pause. That's a good pause. Uh, Memnon is a really important character, especially to the Trojan side of the Iliad and to the mythology and everything like that. Um, he is a demigod, you know, just like the majority of the big players in the Iliad and. Uh, he is the son of Eos, and as thus, he kind of has the same correlation as Achilles does, right? Achilles is this unparalleled warrior. Well, Memnon was seen to be that same kind of warrior. They both wore um, armor created by Hephaestus. They both had these very strong and strict warrior code uh, and conduct and honor that just befit the, 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 the warriors of this time. So it's a really cool character to come out of the Trojan side because even though if you kind of take a look at the story of quote unquote Helen of Troy of the Iliad, Hector is kind of seen as this very important character for the overall morale and fighting capability of Troy. But Memnon was seen as the savior of Troy coming from the south with this army of Indians and Ethiopians and Egyptians. It's a whole smattering and different collection of warriors coming. And this really delivers a lot of fun, cool stuff, right? We already saw a little bit of a teaser of this with the Mythos DLC. If you look to the south, you can see the skyline. I think it's got Osiris and Ra. I, I don't remember who was on the, the skyline there, but you see the hieroglyphs of Egyptian gods. And if you know a lot about Egyptian history, you know as it kind of progresses through the ages, it goes from a um, Egyptian ruled and then to, I think it's, well, Ethiopian then ruled, and then I think it's Numidian ruled, uh, or Nubian ruled overall. Like So it, it kind of changes hands. We think of Egypt as this dynasty that has gone throughout the ages as Egypt, but it has actually a different set of pharaohs that are a different cultural background. 
So it's very, very kind of cool and diverse and, and interesting history that is that is uh, contrary to what you might think. But Memnon too, like I said, is going to be hopefully a pretty devastating character in close combat because, like I said, um, he is going to be kind of what a, they, the Trojans looked at as the the equal to Troy on the other end of the of the I'm sorry, the equal to Achilles on the Trojan side, and he actually dies fighting in a one-on-one -on -one battle against Achilles. Um, Memnon kills the son of Nestor, and Nestor begs Achilles to fight against Memnon in his honor. Like, hey, please avenge, avenge my son's death. Because Memnon already turned down fighting Nestor. Nestor was an old man at the time, and he was like, listen, I'm not going to fight you. It's, it's, it's unfair. It's unhonorable. So Achilles and um, Memnon meet on the battlefield, and... Memnon gets stabbed through the heart by Achilles. And it's kind of cool because you see that right... Nope, wrong spot. You see that right here as we... No, no, am I in the right spot here? Because I thought that this this cutaway right here, I was like, man, did they just put the two characters on the same side fighting each other? But no, this is Achilles. This is his god armor. And this is Memnon fighting. And that is exactly the kind of fight that happens that results in Memnon's ultimate death in the Iliad. So a really cool little touch there. Uh, from Creative Assembly putting these two together. Of course, I, I would hope that there's some sort of campaign mechanic around it or something of the sort. Um, I'm really excited to see how this campaign mechanic works as a whole, but the, a lot of fun stuff coming from them. Now, when it comes to Reese's Pieces here, who I will continue to butcher the name of, uh, now, Ethiopia or Egypt is far to the south. It's like Ethiopia, A-E-T-H-I-O-P-A, -E -I -I not necessarily Ethiopia, right? But Reese's Pieces is from Thrace, and Thrace is to the north. The Thracians had a large conflict with the Scythians, and actually Rhesus does not show up to Troy to help out in time. In fact, he is delayed heavily by their conflict with the Scythians, and he never gets a chance to actually come to the aid of Troy. By the time he actually gets there, he kind of gets... Um, I don't want to say harangued, but uh, essentially he's known for two things. His golden armor of the gods, as you can see right here, and his horses. He has this beautiful, not a menagerie of horses, but a beautiful stable of horses that uh, is kind of his namesake, or, or at least something that is really well known about him. And he dies before really being able to prove his worth to the Trojan side because of a joint raid by Diomedes, or Di Diomedes, whichever you want to pronounce it, and Odysseus. They go and pretty much steal away his horses. And we already know that Diomedes is a pretty big badass, right? He, like, he cuts Athena with his spear. He's like, aha, gotcha, bitch. And so we, we, you know that that guy's already kind of a big deal. And they steal away into his camp in the middle of the night and end up killing Rhesus, steal his armor and his horses. And you again see this here. And that's Diomedes right there fighting against Rhesus. So another really cool touch there from Creative Assembly to kind of put these two characters together in the um, kind of Iliad portrayal that they, they fit there. So I expect a lot of mechanics for Rhesus to be geared around uniting the Thracian tribes together. Thrace has a really interesting history in that depending on which era you're looking at, it's either a really small portion of the map or a really large portion of the map. And it's all pretty much north of uh, the Greek Peninsula, so uh, should be pretty fun there. We can see a lot of very interesting yeah, units as you kind of see through this trailer. A lot of skirmish style units are very light style units, versus Memnon has very heavy units. Looking from from this kind of uh, portrayal right there, when you get this looking, you get a lot of more heavy style units. So probably two very different style of army and different style of warfare than the other. Um, but we also get this now. Just to jump into this portion, you got your standard edition, which is just Total War Saga Troy, the Mythic Edition, which is Total War Saga Troy and Mythos, and then the Ultimate Edition, which is just everything, right? So, and I've made this distinction during my Mythos DLC review. If you've not played any Total War Saga Troy, Mythos is going to be badass and you're going to love it. If you've played a Total War Saga Troy, the Mythos DLC is going to add a little bit maybe not a whole ton so just kind of be mindful of those things if you've already played a whole ton um, but I think that jumping into the ultimate edition if you've never played is the right way to go because you'll basically be able to get the base game plus all these DLCs I think 
I think it'll probably be for like ten, twelve dollars more. I'm not sure how much the Rhesus and Memnon DLC is, but back when Mythos came out, it was something like six or eight dollars above the MSRP of the standard game. So the ultimate was definitely really worth it. So very interesting to see this little uh, this combo pack coming back because they did say when the Mythos DLC happened, it'll only be active for one month after it launches. So now you get a chance to jump into this before the year's end to try and pick up all that DLC, including the new Rhesus and Memnon DLC. And I assume it'll probably be the standard $10 package that it usually is with Creative Assembly. So you can see all that here brought together for the Rhesus and Memnon DLC. And just to give us a little bit of a preview, we can see some of the mechanics here for both of these new heroes. Now, looking over here at Memnon, we get the Pharaoh's servant. Relying on the influence of the Pharaoh and his own fame, Memnon can call upon reinforcements from several distant regions of Ethiopia, Egypt, Canaan, and Susa. Each of these regions has a number of territories, and each territory can send reinforcements consisting of a number of unique units so you can see the cost is going to be pretty substantial here right that's a lot of copper and a lot of gold but you'll get some pretty uh heavy hitting units and this is just from the the area of canon right there the levant but you can see that there's a ton of other ones with certain requirements to get access to those reinforcements in the area which is very very cool and this kind of plays into what I was saying about how Memnon is supposed to bring all these different warriors from across um, a bunch of exotic lands to Troy. So it's really kind of a nifty uh, play in there. We also get resourceful strategist here. As a ruler of distant Ethiopia, uh, Memnon does not have the same traditions of using envoys, priestesses, and spies to support his military strategy. Instead, his many travels and the influence of Pharaoh have attracted his, uh, have attracted camp followers, artisans, sages, and other skilled travelers who can be persuaded to join and aid his armies. So, a much different appro approach to the normal agent system where you get to choose followers to assign to certain locations and what have you so i'm very curious to see how this mechanic actually plays out for the resourceful strategist and as a whole i think memnon is the one i'm probably going to be the most interested in uh just from a mythological standpoint i think he's a much cooler character and i think expanding into that southern region into like egypt and the levant and into the uh uh, canon and whatnot is a really cool area. So I, I'm really, really, really stoked on Memnon as a character. Now for Rhesus, you can see here the really cool little uh, cutouts of them. Uh, we've got his Thracian rituals. So blessed with the immense religious power of his peace, people, Rhesus can rely on... <laughs> Every time I say it, I keep wanting to say Rhesus pieces. Rhesus... Rest, blah, blah, blah. Rhesus can rely on the old Thracian traditions to boost his society and military. He can communicate with the new Olympian gods and the old Thracian deities via different types of rituals suited for the character of each divinity. Now, it's cool, too, because Rhesus is a son of one of the, um, not prophets, um, not sages. There's a, there's a specific word for it that I just cannot think of off the top of my head. Um, of the mountains too. It's actually in right here. It says, aha, uh, muse, muse, aha. He is one of the sons of the eight muses. So he does kind of have a lot of a religious connotation attached to him, which is nifty here. So divine offerings provides favor and devotion after battle, spends devotion for army effects, provides devotion and provincial effects, and spends devotion for elite units. And you can see where you can offer these and do whatnot. Um, I think this one also gives a little bit more details here. When we look at holy sacrifices, we can see some of the old Thracian deities coming into this. So very, very excited to see how some of these rituals are going to take place for Thrace. Uh, again, I don't know what this other icon right here is for and what it does. But as a whole, I think this will be a very interesting set of mechanics. And one of the big things I've always looked for with Troy and I've talked about this so many times in the past, is how these mechanics will possibly come into Total War Warhammer 3. We've already seen how a lot of it seems to be bleeding in with um, parallels to existing stuff in um, Total, Total War Saga Troy as it comes across the Total War uh, Warhammer 3. So I'm excited to see how this plays out, right? I had talked about how the Cathayan Caravan could match the actual... Um, monster expeditions of the mythos dlc and once we, once we got the reveal from creative assembly on how cathay works that seems to be a one-to-one -one correlation so I, i'm stoked to see how some of these play out and how it might possibly translate into warhammer 3 but as always guys thank you so much for watching here today don't forget to comment like and or subscribe as i always say but have a good one and take care